Hi, I'm Kat and I work at the Olympia REI store. Next up, we're going to talk about how to fix a flat, which is one of the more common issues that riders will encounter while they're riding their bike. You will need some specific tools, which we'll go over in just a little bit. We're going to break it down into six easy steps, which is removing your wheel from your frame, removing the tire from the rim, trying to find where the flat occurred, and then talking through whether to replace or uh, patch the tube. And then we're going to learn how to put the tube and the tire back onto your rim and how to reinstall your wheel onto your frame. The tools you're going to need for fixing a flat are a tire pump, a set of tire levers, a tube that fits your wheel and your tire. Depending on your axle, you might need a multi-tool with a set of Allens, and especially if you're looking at your flat kit while you're riding, a set of patches, whether glue or glueless, are a good thing to have with you. So before we take off our wheel, we need to look at our bike and determine a couple of things first. Uh, first of all, what type of brakes do you have? If you have disc brakes, there's really nothing that you need to do with the brakes in order to take your wheel out of your frame. If you have rim brakes, there's usually some sort of uh, mechanism that you need to release in order to get the brake arms to come apart wide enough so your wheel can fall away from the frame. So here's an example of a rim style brake. What I'm going to do is squeeze the brake arms and pull the noodle. And that opens up the brake pads away from the rim so the tire can clear those brake pads on the way out. Sometimes with rim brake bikes, you might have one that has a lever that you have to flip up, but make sure that you do this step before moving on to uh, your axle. So I'm actually gonna have you go ahead and pause the video so you can look at your bike and practice uh, disengaging your rim brakes if that's what you have, uh, and just getting to know the type of brakes that you have in case you do have to disengage those in order to get your wheel out. So once we've disengaged our brake, if we have to, we're gonna move on to our axle. There are a lot of different axles out there. In this case, with the bike that I have in front of me, it is a quick release uh, axle, and uh, you might have a through axle at home, and we'll show an example of that as well. So in this case, there is a lever on one side that I'm going to open up. I'm gonna put my other hand on the nut and unscrew the nut until my wheel falls out of my frame. So here's an example of a through axle. This one happens to be a quick release through axle. In order to take this out of my uh, hub, I'm going to open up my lever and then just start to unscrew my axle from the threads, grab onto my tire so when I pull my axle out, my tire doesn't just fall right to the ground. And then my wheel drops out of my fork. So this is an example of a through axle that does require an Allen tool. What I'm gonna do is insert my Allen tool into my axle and just start to turn to unthread. And if I were going to be taking my wheel out, I would take my axle out, drop my wheel. So now I'm gonna have you pause the video so you can go to your own bike and practice that a couple of times. So we're gonna move on to the rear wheel and some of the steps are the same as what we learned in the front wheel and some of the steps are a little bit different. To start with, what we wanna do is make sure that our chain is as far away from our wheel as possible. So what I'm gonna have you do is grab your rear shifter and your pedal and shift all the way down into your hardest gear which is the smallest cog in the back this gets the chain in a position where it is the easiest to get the wheel out of the frame next if you have a rim brake bike you're going to go ahead and disengage those brakes in our case we have a disc brake bike so we don't have to worry about that and then we're going to open up our axle and unscrew our nut until you start to feel your wheel drop out from the frame. I usually like to take my left hand and grab the wheel so it doesn't just fall right out from the frame. 
And what I do with my left hand is uh, we need to move our rear derailleur out of the way so the cassette can clear the derailleur and the chain. So what I'm gonna do is I like to take my hand, my four fingers here and kind of pull the derailleur back and out of the way. And then my wheel starts to drop out. I take my thumb, put it on, there's usually a little tab on the back of your derailleur cage. I push that down so I can move the wheel out from in between the chain. If you don't have a stand at home, or if this happens to uh, occur on a ride, there is a way that you can flip your bike over and take the wheel out. So same steps as when your bike is facing uh, right side down. Uh, we're going to open up the skewer on the one side, take our other hand and unscrew the nut on the other side. And as soon as we can kind of feel that the wheel is lifting out of the frame, we're gonna grab it with our hand, move our derailleur out of the way, move the chain so you can clear the cassette out of the way as well. So now that our wheel is out of our bike, I have a quick note for anyone with hydraulic disc brakes. Just be careful not to compress the brake lever because it can cause the pads to get too close together and they can't go back to their original position. And that will cause you to uh, not be able to get the rotor back in between the pads when you try to put your wheel back in the frame. So this is where I'm gonna have you all pause the video and practice those additional steps to get and do that several times so you can get used to how this feels on your bike. So now that we have our wheel off of our bike, we're gonna go into the steps of fixing a flap. So depending on the puncture, you might still have a little bit of air left in your tire. So what we're gonna do is if you do have a valve cover, unscrew that. And you can use a set of keys or you could use the end of your um, tire lever. If you have a tri allen handy and small enough, you could also use that to deflate the tube all of the way and get all the air out. If you have a Presta valve, we'll go over that in a little while. So once most of the air is out, I usually like to go all the way around the tire and just kind of squeeze and make sure that the bead is away from the rim. So now we have to go through the process of getting one side of the tire off of the rim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start opposite of the valve stem. So valve stem is down here and I'm gonna be working up here. We're gonna take our tire lever and with the curved end, we're going to tuck it underneath the tire bead like that. And then we're just gonna start working our way around the tire until the entire side of that bead is on the other side of the rim. Once that's done, we can take our tube out of our tire. And I'm gonna set my wheel down so I can inspect my tube to determine the cause of my flat. There are several flats that you can get while you're riding. The first one is a puncture, and that is just when a thorn or a nail goes through your tire and punctures your tube. If you can find the puncture, you'll just find one hole. There's also a pinch flat, or sometimes they're called snake bites, and that happens when the tube gets squished between the rim and the tire, maybe because of a hard impact on a curb or a rock, or if you had too low of pressure in your tires, uh, it can also happen that way. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna figure out where the flat occurred on my tire or on my tube. I'm going to, if you have a hand pump and you're on the road, you can do this, or if you're at home, you can use your uh, floor pump. And I'm just going to inflate the tire or the tube to maybe twice its normal size. And then just kind of listen 
and feel for where that puncture might have taken place. Whether you are replacing your tube or deciding to patch it, I like to try to find the hole because then I know if it is a puncture, I really wanna spend a lot of time looking in my tire and make sure that there isn't something that's still embedded in there that will cause the flat to happen all over again after I replace my tube. So next I'm going to spend a little bit of time inspecting my rim and my tire to make sure there wasn't some damage that I need to address. You can inspect the inside of your tire with it still on the rim. If you decide to take it off of the rim, which is also fine, just know that tires are oftentimes directional, usually indicated by an arrow. And in this case, we have our directional arrow here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my tire off of my rim. And then I'm just going to look inside the tire all the way around to see if I can find a puncture or any damage that might have occurred because of the flat. Next up, I'm going to just take a quick peek at my rim and my rim tape to make sure that the rim doesn't have some significant damage to the metal and that the rim tape isn't cracked or ripped in any places um, because if the rim tape is ripped, you're just gonna get have a higher chance of getting another flat. And if that is the case, just take it into a bike shop and they'll be able to help you out and get that fixed. So now that I know that my rim and my rim tape is in good shape, if there was anything still left in your tire, you've removed that. Just be careful with your fingers. Sometimes, especially if you do a lot of road riding or commuting, you might get a piece of glass uh, that's still stuck in there. So just be a little careful as you're running your fingers on the inside of your uh, tire wall. From here, I'm going to put one side of my tire onto the rim. Usually I just work both sides around until everything fits in there nicely. So at this point, we are ready to replace our tube uh, and or, or you might decide that you want to patch it. My recommendation for getting on the trail or back on the road the fastest is to just replace the tube. Um, sometimes you may find yourself on a really long road ride and maybe you only have one tube with you. In that case, replace the tube if you get a flat and if you get another flat, that's a good time to patch uh, your damaged tube. Or after you get home, if you want to patch a damaged tube, you could do that. Uh, just know that the most reliable way to fix a flat is to just replace it with a brand new tube that hasn't been damaged. Times when you wouldn't want to patch a tube is if the hole is too big to repair or if the hole is too close to the valve stem. I'm not gonna go through and show you how to use a patch kit and patch a tube, but there are other videos linked below that you can check out. Right now I'm gonna have you pause the video so you can go to your own wheel and go through the steps of removing your tube and your tire so you can practice those skills. So now we are ready to put our tube and our tire back on our wheel. From here, I'm going to get one side of my tire onto the rim. I'm just gonna start that process. Kind of use both of your hands to work the bead onto the rim of the wheel. So now you can see that I have one side of the tire on the rim and a big gap where the bead, the other bead still has to go onto the rim. From there, I'm going to grab my tube and if you want, you can put a little bit of air into it. It can help uh, get the tube into the tire a little bit easier. Uh, I found that it isn't too hard for me to just get it in there without uh, any air inflated in the tube. Find your valve hole and put your tube, your valve through the hole and tuck your, start tucking your tube into your tire. One thing to make sure of is that you don't get any twists in your tube as you're going around. So just kind of make sure that you're being mindful of that as you tuck 
your tube all the way around into your tire. And once everything is tucked, you're ready to start putting the bead onto the rim. And the way that we started when we took the tire off of the rim was opposite of the valve stem. Right now, since we're putting everything back on, we are starting with the valve stem and working our hands around, kind of opposite of each other, and then meeting up at the top. until everything goes back onto the rim. So this was a pretty easy tire to put on. If you happen to have a tire that is a tighter bead or a tighter fit with the rim, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, one, of that, uh, one of those things is the bead that's already all the way on the rim, just push it to the middle of the rim so the diameter is smaller and it will allow for the bead that is going onto the rim to be a little bit easier to, to push or pull on. You can also push the valve with your thumb to give a little bit more space in the tire and then you can pop the bead back onto the rim a little bit easier. So now we're ready to reinflate our tire. So we're just gonna remember back to our, uh, where our PSI on our sidewall is and reference that before we go ahead and pump it back up. I'm going to set my wheel down and attach my pump. Usually when you reattach your pump and there's no air in your tube, the valve will push back up into your rim. To avoid this, you can push it down with the palm of your hand or with your thumb, and then that will keep the valve from pushing into the rim. And now I'm just gonna start pumping it up. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of keeping an eye on how everything is looking. And I'll actually pause and kind of inspect and make sure that the bead isn't popping off of the rim in any places. Everything still looks good. I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on this as I am reinflating. All right. And then when you go to take your pump head off of your valve, just try to make sure that you are pulling it as straight off as possible so you don't uh, end up uh, bending your valve stem. And if you have a Schrader valve, go ahead and put the cap back on. And now we're ready to put our wheel back onto our bike. So the two most common types of valve cores that you'll encounter are the Schrader valve, which looks just like the valve on your car tire, and the Presta valve. And I'm going to go through how to deflate or inflate your Presta valve if you have that on your bike. So in terms of Opening up your Presta valve, you're just going to unscrew the middle piece there to open it up. If you're not sure if it is unscrewed all the way and open, just give it a tap and if air comes out, that means that it is open all the way. If you were to be uh, changing out a Presta valve tube, one thing that you'll want to keep in mind is that you need to unscrew this nut and take it all the way off of the valve in order to get the tube out of the rim. Once you're done inflating your tire, go ahead and close the valve. And if you aren't sure if it's closed all the way, give it a tap. And if air doesn't come out, that means it's closed and you're ready to go. So now we're ready to put our wheel back into our frame. What I'm going to do uh, for this uh, first step is I want to make sure that my cassette is in between my chain. So I'm going to move this part of my chain up and make sure that my uh, cassette is in between there and then just kind of slowly lower it down and as i'm doing that i'm going to lift up on my the cage of my derailleur to pull the derailleur body kind of out and back and then i can set my axle into the dropouts and while i'm doing that i'm also kind of keeping an eye on the rotor and making sure that it's going in between the brake pads you also want to make sure that the axle is all the way into the dropout, so just kind of check each side and make sure that it is sitting in there all the way. Now I can tighten the nut until I have to use a pretty firm push to close my skewer, my uh, quick release lever. 
Now that your wheel is back in the frame, make sure that you re-engage those brakes. Uh, if disc brakes, there isn't anything you have to do, but with rim brakes, you will wanna re-engage those before you start riding. Uh, if you have a uh, through axle, you will wanna thread that all the way in. Uh, right now, we're just working on a quick release. So in terms of putting the front wheel back into the frame, it's going to be very similar steps minus navigating the derailleur. We want to make sure that the rotor is going in between the pads and that the axle is all the way into the dropouts of the fork. And then don't forget to re-engage your front brakes after you put the wheel in. And that's how you fix a flat. I hope that was helpful. You will be able to find a link to a list of the steps on how to fix a flat so you can reference later. I do encourage people to practice this at home. Maybe put it on your calendar as something that you do from time to time so these skills uh, become more natural to you. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe.